Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about ratios and proportions. So we're going to start off with the definition of a ratio, which is a comparison of two numbers. Now here we use variables to represent those numbers. So our numbers are going to be A and B. We can represent a ratio using this symbol here, A, and then the colon symbol, B. Or we can represent it as a fraction, A over B. And because B is on the denominator, B cannot be zero. So just be careful when you make a ratio. Um, if you're converting from the first uh, format to the fraction format, the second piece of your ratio always goes in the denominator. All right, so let's look at a quick example. Simplify the following ratio, and we have to make sure to convert our units. So here we have two inches over one foot. Since they don't have the same inches, we need to make sure we convert it so that one foot is 12 inches, so that now they both have the same units. Now when we do our simplifying, the cool thing about ratios is once the units are the same, they actually cancel each other out. It's like we're dividing inches by inches. They cancel out, and my answer is only 1 over 6. It's not going to have any units. And it's really important that you remember that when you're simplifying ratios, there are no units in a ratio when you simplify it. All right, so next, let's look at this one. We want to use ratios to solve. We know that the perimeter of the rectangle is 24, and the length and the width are in a ratio of 3 to 5. Now, if I made the length 3 and the width 5, because ratio 3 to 5, a lot of students think that that means the length is th uh, 3 and the width is 5. If I found the perimeter of this, 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 would be 16, not 24. So we have to be really careful. Just because the ratio is 3 to 5 doesn't mean that's what the lengths are. So what we want to do in this case is we want to figure out what x is and multiply that 3 and 5 by x on all sides in order to get our perimeter to 24. If we think about the ratio, if I have length to width 3x over 5x, as long as x's are the same, they cancel out, and we still have a ratio of 3 to 5. So adding x doesn't mess up our ratio, but it gives us a way to solve for what those lengths need to be. So now I can set up my equation, 3x plus 3x, because there's two lengths, plus 5x plus 5x have to be 24 for our perimeter. And then we add 16x equals 24, and then dividing by 16 and simplifying, we get x has to be 3 over 2, or 1.5. All right, so then if we want to find the length and the width, we would plug this in. So the width would be 5 times 3 halves, which is 15 over 2, which is 7.5. And then the length would be 3 times 3 halves, which is 9 over 2, or 4.5. All right. Let's look at another example. It's very similar, uh, just a little different. The angles in a quadrilateral are in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 5 to 8 find the measure of each angle. So this one doesn't give us the perimeter like the other one did. It only gives us the ratio information. So if I think about this, I've got 2x and 3x and 5x and 8x. And what do we know about all the angles inside of a quadrilateral? Well, if we think back to what we learned about interior angles, I know that they all have to add up to 360. So we can use that and set up our equation to equal 360, do a little bit of, of algebra there, and we should end up with x equals 20. And then we can plug that in to find the measure of each angle. Uh, 20 times 8 is 160. 20 times 2 is 40. 20 times 5 is 100. And 20 times 3 is is 60. And then if you wanted to double check your answer, you could add those numbers together and make sure they equal 360 degrees. All right, so next we have definition of a proportion. So a proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equal. So the difference between a ratio and a proportion, a ratio is simply 
just the two numbers in either fraction form or um, a different format here, A colon B. Oh, but a proportion is when you take two ratios and set them equal to each other. So here I have A to B equals C to D, or we could write it A over B equals C over D. And then we have a couple little definitions here. We have means and extremes. Now our extremes are going to be our outside pieces, and the means are going to be the inside pieces. And it's a lot easier to think about outside versus inside when they're written in this format here as opposed to the, the fraction format. So here's my extremes and my means. All right, so my extremes are A and D, and my means are B and C. So just little, little vocabulary that might pop up every once in a while. All right, so let's look at an example of proportions, figuring out that blank area there. If I have a ratio of one to two, I need to keep that ratio the same, and it's going to be, well, if I do one to three, I'm gonna multiply by three. If I want the ratio to be the same, I need to multiply this by three, and I get three to six. All right, another way to think about this, uh, for B, we've got fraction form. So four to 16, I can take two and multiply it by two to get to four, or we can think backward, what am I dividing by? Four divided by two is two, so I wanna take 16 and divide it by two to get to eight. So this should be two over eight as our second fraction there. All right, so uh, let's see, you can solve a proportion by using the shortcut um, called cross multiplying. Now before I go into this, I actually think I wanna back up just a second and explain a little bit more what proportions are doing. Uh, so let's just look at B. If I know that four over 16 equals two over eight, what I'm saying is that these fractions are equivalent to each other. If we reduced these fractions, four over 16 would reduce to one fourth, and two over eight would also reduce to one fourth. So those two fractions are equivalent when reduced, and they're equivalent when they're not reduced, but it's a little difficult to see if they're not reduced. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing when we're doing proportions. All right, so now let's look at cross multiplying. So here I would multiply, I've got 10 times a minus five, you have to multiply 10 to both pieces. So always make sure you remember your parentheses so that we end up distributing. And then that's gonna equal four times a. So what we're doing when we cross multiply is it's getting rid of the fractions when we cross multiply, which is really nice because it's easier to work with equations when we don't have fractions. All right, so now we distribute 10a minus 50 equals 4a. Uh, subtract that guy over, I've got negative 50 equals negative 6a. And then, so a is going to equal, well negative divided by negative is a positive. 50 over six, which reduces to 25 over three. And I love improper fractions as long as they're reduced, so I'm gonna leave my answer just like that. All right, and then let's look at the last example here. We know that we have a ratio, a proportion, DE to EF to DF is equal to four to five to six. So they give us the ratios of all these sides. We need to find the lengths of the sides, and if you notice, we don't really know the lengths of all the sides yet. We need to find EF and DF. So if I want to find EF and DF, I'm looking at this proportion here, five to six. So I can set up my proportion, EF over DF, oops, DF equals five over six. So just make sure to line them up properly when you're reading it, if they have more than two pieces. And then plug in your information, EF is Y, and df is y plus four equals five to six. So set in, setting up your equation, now we can cross multiply. Six y equals five times y plus four. So six y equals five y plus 20. And let's see, y equals 20. And then it says to find df and ef. So ef is y, so that's gonna be 20, and df is y plus four, which is 24. All right, so playing with some proportions and ratios there. Uh, that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.